Greetings YouTube, this is Jared with Self-Reliance Essentials and Omnivore Blade Works. It's uh, February maybe 11th or 12th and our tractor is having its battery charged. I'm going to go in the shop see what's going on. Got a phase converter running on the drill press because I'm working on a couple of new models. Using my SF Chef handle series design which gives you a lot of different grip angle abilities or grip abilities. Standard grip. Thrusting and snap cutting grip. Caramid grip. Ice pick grip, and then also the first prototype of the Baby Mamba. See how that turns out? See what it feels like? Try to get it right. Riggs is in his bed adjusting to his new shock collar he needed. He's doing pretty good. Hi Riggs. Can you speak Riggs? Speak. Speak. Riggs. Speak. Woof. Speak. Usually he, he says something but not today. All right we'll move on to the couple of nice little baby crow daggers which are about ready. I'm having difficulty focusing sometimes. Um, but these will, I'm waiting to mount my water cooled platen up to my KMG grinder after I get some rough grinding finished before I finish these up. I'm going to do longitudinal grinds on the, on the blade bevel so that I don't have to hand sand them. Um, here's something cool. This is my new router table that I made. It's the purpose of um, doing some deburring work. There we go. Deburring work using a DeWalt variable speed grinder. And it's really cool because you can just unclip it. Well, unbuckle it, then unclip it. And you can change out your bits. And I just ordered some 8th inch collets, so I'll be able to use tiny little cheap burrs as well as these bigger burrs. Um, so that goes together and sticks out just a little bit. And I'll probably build a fence for it at some point. And I'm going to use templates to do this deburring work, which I had been doing with uh, the Dremel, except I was... Um, man, I can't focus this sucker. I was using the Dremel on top, and on a small workpiece like this, the Dremel doesn't work very well because it's the router attachment kind of just wants to be a little bit floppy, so you can't really keep it square. Whereas on the table, you move the whole workpiece around, and it works much better. All right. We go into the grinding room and show you what's going on in here. I've got some Murder 2 swords that I'm working on. Come on, focus. I can't get it focused to save my life. Sorry about that. Anyway, these are going to have two different grinds. One with a, a continuously twisting grind where it makes it so that I'm grinding to the center line and then up at the tip I'm going to like make it sort of a stronger tip and then on another one two of them I'm gonna I'm gonna run a uh, do the right grind the tips first so they're pretty stout and then I'll do a little bit sh shorter grind and then put a fuller down the middle so it'll be two different variations and I'll figure out which one's better in the long run obviously the wider your blade bevel is, the deeper it'll penetrate into a target. 
uh, whereas the more obtuse blade bubble is more like an axe and won't get stuck as easily. Um, I've got these all rough ground up to about 65 micron. I really like the Trizac belts from 3M. That's what I, they don't jump at all and give you a nice consistent finish and you can get, you can get really pretty damn close to your objective grind line when you uh, use a Trizac belt. Um, also working on three more Arctotus swords, which you see on the website on the main page. This is the a hidden tang model, and so that way you can. Um, the reason I did that is so you, the end user can modify their grips if they want to, and uh, I don't have to have a full tang out there with all that weight. This is plenty strong, and I've got the radiuses here as the tang changes the size so that there's no real stress concentration there. Um, and then moving on here I've got Kodiak swords with the hook tooth spine which is intended for grabbing branches or whatever pulling it to you so that way when you've got a sword in your hand you've actually got a gripping tool where you can reach in and and grab prickly things and move it around without letting go of your sword. And then I've got the Dire Wolf combat sword thingy, which I guess I have these all rough ground now, which is great. Uh, I've got a little more work to do on these two bevels in each one of these, I guess, are rough. Yeah, two rough bevels to clean up. And then, of course, a fuller will go down the middle. Probably go a little wider this time than the last time. You can see that piece of pencil line and that other grind line up there. So it'll be a continuously changing fuller, which is kind of a tricky operation, but with a KMG grinder and a map arm as a work rest, or the new my new Wilmot grinder rest, I'll be able to do that without too much trouble. I just need to make a use my fixture to, to make a straight line. Um, here on the wall you can see the murder two. I've already ground the whole thing and you can see how it's a straight sort of compound twisting bevel. This will need to be hand sanded probably. And then uh, before I do heat treat I'm going to have I guess this is two final Kodiak sawbacks with their uh, will be welded on pommel, pommel and hilt. And then I've got four 5160 Kodiak swords, standard format, which will get heat treated and mar tempered. Um, one of those is spoken for, three are going to be available. And that's what's happening. I've got a lot more grinding to do. I've been comparing um, grinding belts as well. The, I'm really, really satisfied with the Cubitron uh, 3M belts um, for my rough grinding on annealed steel. And I'm trying out these purple belts from Phoenix Abrasives. And they, t they do pretty well, but they don't, they're not lasting as long as the, as the Cubitron. You can see the difference right there. Brand new belts, Cubitron versus Phoenix Abrasives 36 grit purple belt and uh, Greg up there at Phoenix says that the purple belts are more engineered for hardened steels so that the grit fractures and stay sharp longer so I've only tried one belt so far and it looks kinda like I've gotten some I mean it doesn't feel as sharp anymore but it's kind of maybe has maybe there's some galling or metal particles stuck to it but these run really smooth. Uh, the joint here is uh, doesn't jump or anything. They do a really good job on their joints. So I'm trying their 80 grit in their 36 grit in that product and also trying their orange belt, which is a more of an economy ceramic belt. And they all cut pretty well. So it's just they, they don't last quite as long as the Cubitrons in the soft materials. I'm going to do some more testing on that.
very fond of the Trizac belts, which I'll be ordering more of before too long from Pops. Uh, just ordered a new phase converter and motor for this Wilmot grinder. This one is going to live in this room. Um, and it's going to be running with a fast motor. And so I'll be using it for hogging off stuff like I use my KMG for now. In the KMG, I'm going to run a uh, water-cooled platen and run a little slower with uh, for other purposes. All right, well, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you're having a fun Valentine's Day and make sure you save some of your pennies for your special lady or or maybe just share the love and get somebody some chocolate, a bag of chocolate chips, throw it at them. All right, this is Jared, and see you next time.